Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the Audio Levels channel and today we've got something really cool going on here. This is a sub $100 IEM shootout between the The Audio Legacy 2, Moondrop Aria and the Blonde Prometheus uh, BLA8. Uh, if you're new here at the channel, welcome and please go ahead and subscribe and I'll give you two reasons to do so. The first reason is going to be to do with the purpose of the channel. The purpose of the channel is uh, not so much to give the individual reviews. We're going to still do the individual reviews of each item. But also, I've noticed that a lot of people ask the questions in the comments. How does this sound versus this? How does this sound versus this? Uh, what do you recommend me for at this price? There's going to be a lot of content of direct head-to-head -head comparisons. And if you're subscribed to the channel, that gives you the chance to go down and leave a comment uh, down below in the comment section and say, I want to see a direct head-to-head -head between these two. Or I want to see a direct head-to-head -head between these. I want to see a best $500 and under earphones. A best $1,000 and under earphones uh, sort of comparison like I did the other day. Uh, if you go back and you look, there's, a, there's currently one up for $1,000, which is four earphones, Campfire Audio, Mezzi, and uh, Fearless Audio. So they're all subscriber suggestions. So if you get... Um, if you get yourself subscribed, just leave a comment. Tell me what do you want to see go head to head. The reason I'm doing these sort of things is... I think that gives you more of a, an understanding. It's all well and good me saying this has a certain quality in the highs and you know, and this, this has this sort of sound stage. But if you're looking at multiple earphones, you want to know directly which one of these has the bigger sound stage, which one of these has the best bass and so on. Um, it's very hard to quantify when you're doing just an individual review and you're saying this has great bass. Great bass in relation to what? Uh, so that's the way the channel is sort of going to operate from here on out. Still going to do the individual reviews, but also listening to the subscribers and taking your suggestions for video ideas. I actually really enjoy doing these sort of recommendations. Just know that they're going to be based on the way that I listen to music. So if you find yourself liking earphones that I like anyway, uh, then that's probably going to be a good indication for you that you might like something else that I recommend uh, or agree with me uh, to a certain extent on what I'm saying in these comparison videos. Now, the other reason to subscribe is going to be to, uh, basically, we're giving away one set of earphones every month, at least. Up to Christmas, we're going to be trying to give away some crazier stuff and maybe multiple earphones. Uh, this month, we're giving away the Blonde Prometheus BL88. So if you're subscribed, you're automatically entered and you'll be entered into all future draws. Uh, we don't have a lot of subscribers, so you've got a really good chance of winning. Now, let's get into this comparison. This was suggested, a lot of people were asking for comparisons between the Aria and the Legacy, and other people were asking between the Aria and uh, the Prometheus. So I just thought I would put them all together. Uh, the other question that I'm tying into this is if these punch above their price point. Uh, that's that's a, a usual thing that people ask in terms of how much value they're getting. So I've got a few other earphones to describe how how these ones work in terms of value. This is the Shure Tape, the Tin Hi-Fi P1, and this is the, the new Campfire Audio Satsuma. There's reviews for all of these individually on the channel. Now, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be the, um, the format. We're gonna go, let's break it down straight away with accessories. So in terms of accessories, how am I gonna rate these? Let's do, Let's do a stacking system. Let's go up, down. So number one, we'll do at the top for each one of these sections and my least favorite uh, down at the bottom. So accessories in terms of the The Audio Legacy 2, uh, it streaks ahead of the other two, uh, mainly um, because of the quality of the accessories that are included. The Blonde by far is the worst uh, in this scenario. Um, we'll start with the cable. The cable of the The Audio Legacy 2 is fantastic. This is the sort of cable that you would pay 60 to $80 just a few years ago, uh, just for the cable alone. So the fact that you're getting it with an excellent set of earphones as well, um, it's, it's really great value for money. Uh, quad braid into dual twist. It's, it's fantastic construction and it performs really, really nice and it looks great. The second favorite cable would have to be the one for the Blonde. It's 
good. Uh, actually, I'm probably not doing justice by the way that I've got it wrapped up there. Uh, it's a good cable. It's, it's nice quality. It's not as flexible as the one on the The Audio, but it's really good quality. It looks nice. It's not as premium feeling, but it's definitely better than something, uh, anything that you would get on a KZ earphone, which are absolute trash. Uh, this, is, this is a nice cable. Uh, the the one that I don't like is the Aria cable. The Aria cable is a um, it's, it's this corded cable, and I just don't like. It. I think it transfers microphonics sometimes, and it's uh, it's just it's just a not a very flexible, pliable cable. I don't enjoy using it. So I would suggest if you're getting the Aria, look at something like the is it the Linsol. Tui cables. I'll put a link in the description below. I believe they're about $20, $20 or so and that will greatly increase the, uh, the one flaw that I find in these earphones. Now uh, let's uh, talk about the, the other accessories that are included. As you can see the, the, the Aria comes with this little case. It's a very generic case but it's nice somewhere to keep your earphones. The audio go above and beyond again with this really nice uh, case. Uh, really really like that i think it's the same as on the 500 hundred dollar canera sculled and it's the same one that the audio use with uh, a lot of their other higher end earphones uh, blonde just give you a drawstring bag so it's trash um the the tips quality the audio's tips are excellent again step ahead of the aria which is miles ahead of the blonde so in terms of overall of accessories it's an easy easy one uh, as an overall package for the uh, for the Legacy 2, Aria 2nd, and some way behind uh, the blown Prometheus. Now, second category, a little bit controversial, uh, aesthetics. Believe it or not, aesthetics are super important. Uh, people in this hobby like to pretend that, you know, th that looks don't matter and sound's everything. Sound is not everything. Sound, you're having to use these things and wear them. Uh, I like my earphones to look good, but I also like them to um, to work well, which is why I, I take a lot of uh, time to talk about the accessories. I think it's important as an overall experience. Uh, in terms of looks, uh, people will talk about, yeah, sound quality, sound quality, but they always seem to go for the shiny thing that's hot and good looking. So to me, it matters. It doesn't matter as much as sound. It doesn't matter as much as accessories, build quality. It's down on that totem pole, but it's something we have to consider. In terms of looks, by far, Blonde Prometheus. This earphone is crazy. It's beautiful. It's stunning. It's, it's unlike anything I've seen before. Uh, and I really, really like what Blonde have done with this design. It is by far the earphone that I've been getting questioned about. Uh, when, when I'm out and around the office and stuff like that, people are like, what is that? Nobody will bat an eye now when I'm using something like that, but people take notice with this, and it's just a really, really good looking earphone. In terms of the other two, uh, I'll, I'll do a triangle there. Uh, it, it really depends whether you like metal. I like what they've done with this little uh, design. It's like when the people spin the paint uh, on an axis. Uh, it's it's kind of a cool looking design. It, it's not as flashy as the The Audio Legacy 2s. The Audio Legacy 2s have a beautiful faceplate on them. And they also have the, the advantage of seeing the driver configuration on the inside. You can see the dynamic there. And if I spin it round, you see the balanced armature in here as well. You have to give me some slack for my fingers. I've just completed a, a DR650 motorcycle build. Uh, complete custom bike and I've been messing about with the carburetor for the past two days so my hands are absolutely ruined the uh, yeah so like let's go looks wise it really depends whether you want metal or resin in terms of that but I think the blonde are the better looking construction wise I would say these two um, purely because metal metal will always take preference in terms of uh, in terms of build quality. In fact, I'm going to go Aria number one on that because the Arias are significantly better than the Blondes. So Aria, uh, Prometheus and Legacy. Uh, resin shells, they, they look great and they're functional and they're lightweight. Uh, you just need to be a little bit more careful because if you drop it and it hits a point on the end, it can crack or fracture. It's very rare to happen, but it, I find that metal earphones just 
hold up a little bit better over time in terms of durability with the connectors. They're all two pin connectors. Uh, Aria takes it again because they've got the slight recess in there. So it's gonna help prevent water ingress. It just performs a little bit more, more of a seal uh, to the connectors. Uh, Arias are fantastically well built, all, all metal earphones, just really, really, really solid, solid earphones. But the Blondes, again, all metal. I thought these were going to be kind of chintzy when they arrived, but they're solid metal and I don't see any way that they can go wrong. Famous last words. Uh, let's go. Uh, so that's build quality, uh, aesthetic, and yeah, let's get into the sound before we'll talk about value last. Uh, sound quality, I truly believe from my tuning that the Thee Audios are just a little bit ahead of the Aria. These are down, but I've chosen to include them on the list because they're a fun and engaging sounding earphone. When we look at them overall like that, uh, these are by far the bassiest, they're a little warmer, they're, they're a little bit muddier sounding than the, the other two. The driver in this is surprisingly really, really good. Um, this is a, a, a hybrid earphone with a single balanced armature and a beryllium dynamic driver in it. And this one, uh, I, I believe it's biocellulose or something like that on the driver. It, th these are both, let's do this. This really depends on the way you listen to music. And I know a lot of people are going to want a, a definite answer and it's just not there. It's, it, tuning can make up such a big part of the way that you listen to music that an earphone is not going to be better for you than it is for another. This is one of these cases where they're both technically very good. I would say slightly more detail retrieval and slightly more impact in the low end, whereas these ones seem to shine really well in the mid-range, uh, upper mid-range, especially female vocals sound fantastic on the area. Uh, it's, it's tit for tat with this in terms of detail retrieval, slightly more sound stage, slightly more here. Um, both of these are fantastic. I, I think this one works a little bit better for EDM, that sort of stuff, because the, the, um, the way that the beryllium dynamic driver hits. Uh, and this one is a little bit more um, flatter overall sounding. It's just got like a little bit less bass, but they're, they're very, very, very close. Uh, so much so that I would find it hard to, to choose one or the other and, and I will not recommend one over the other. If you like a slightly flatter, although this still has a decent like punch to the bass, uh, yeah go for this one. If you like female vocals I would say go for this one. Listen to K-pop, K-rock, that sort of stuff. Uh, in fact I was listening to Devin Gray, uh, a Japanese band and th these were absolutely banging with it with the, the vocals and the guitars and that sort of stuff. And this one more sort of two step, uh, two feet, uh, quick musical doodles, uh, just displayed that sub bass response a little bit better. It, should you dismiss the the Prometheus? I don't think so. If you like the way they look and you like the 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 styling of them, they're a fun earphone to listen to. They've got good bass. They're very clear. They're very detailed. It's just that these two are, are a level above them. Um, and when we start to talk about levels, let's get into that because what I'm going to talk about is when somebody talks about which one being, um, you know, punching above its price point is a, a very common thing uh, in this hobby and it's something that I talk about as well. That is getting muddied, uh, that is very much getting muddied uh, in recent times because if we look at sound quality, uh, the chi-fi market has opened things up so much that the the way that these earphones perform versus me maybe spending an extra 20 30 40 50 dollars is there these back in the day would have been what i consider as wow these sound you know way above their price point these sound like a 200 dollar earphone they don't anymore and that's because things like the sure tape which i will put here Sure tape are maybe $30 more. Uh, I believe $20 more would get you the Legacy 3. Uh, Legacy 3 would go sort of similarly here. I believe these Tin Hi-Fi P1s, these will go way, way up top there. Uh, Tin Hi-Fi P1s are about $150. You can sometimes catch them on sale about $140. 
So it's not the case of if you're going to spend that little bit more money, are you going to get, you know, are you going to be able to compete with these other earphones? This is definitively better than these two in my ears. And this is streaks ahead of all of these. Where you can talk about value for money is if I bring these in. This is, and I'm just going to take the cables off them so everything's laid out neatly. This is the Campfire Audio Satsuma. This is the new single balanced armature earphone from Campfire Audio. And Campfire tune their stuff really, really well. And this is based on, not as, as an overall presentation, but as a... Um, pure sound quality where would these fit in these are $200 they have you know they, they have a single balanced armature driver uh, where do they fit in in the grand scheme of things and this is where your value for money comes in this is $200 this is from a western manufacturer this is um, you know this is what's considered a good western manufacturer their entry level earphones let's do This is probably fair, although I would probably say there. Um, it's two hundred dollars is now equal to about hundred dollars in Chi Fi. If I was taking these ones out of it, if I was choosing between all of these to listen to, and you told me I could pick one just to listen to sound wise. Regardless of price, I don't have to pay for them. Which one would I choose? This or this? I prefer the way this sounds to this, and I prefer the way this sounds to this. Um, that is where you're talking about your value propositions. Your value propositions is Chi-Fi versus Western um, or traditional companies. Uh, Chi-Fi are producing this stuff in Shenzhen. They're, they've got super low cost. They've got super fast entry to market and new designs. And they've got access to all the latest technologies and drivers. The audio, I really think, are pushing ahead with uh, the overall package. Uh, let's talk about overall package. We'll take these out. Out of the three of them, by far overall package, accessories, cable, uh, aesthetic, and the the sound quality, it goes one, two, three. That that's just the simplest way to put it. Um, in terms of how which one I would take on sound, it also goes one, two, and three. That's my honest opinion because I like the the slight extra hit of bass in there. But if you give me these, I would not would not complain. Now. Again, let's go back to value, these two. There's a $20 difference between them. I don't think there's a $20 difference in sound. I think overall as a package, there's more than a $20 difference when you consider the accessories, the sound and uh, all of that stuff. The only reason I would say I would take this would be the, uh, the build quality is fantastic on these. So there you go. I've waffled on for a little bit too long, but I hope that clears up like my perception the way that I think it, it works. I go one, two, and three. All fantastic earphones. I think they're all worth the money uh, for different reasons. I wouldn't be unhappy if I had any of them, but definitely these two are going to be the winners for me today. So thank you very much for watching. As I say, if you're subscribed to the channel, go ahead and leave a comment down below asking for a direct head to head or if you want some clarification on what I've been talking about there. Also, I'm not going to do videos on this on recommendations. Well, I might do it actually. Um, hit me down with um, what type of music you listen to, how much you've got to spend and what earphones you're thinking about getting if you're looking for recommendations. And I'll throw out recommendations based on how I listen to music. So just something for consideration. I always get people asking which product I should buy. So I'll either answer it in the comments or I'll do a video of compiling people's questions for comparisons or uh, recommendations. Uh, that's it for this review. Thank you very much for watching. Hope I didn't go on too much and I'll see you on the next video.